So on the 11th of March, Lawrence Wong, the Finance Minister of Singapore, spoke about possible taxations for NFTs in Singapore, which might affect some of us, especially those that own NFTs or thinking of creating NFTs or using NFTs to earn a living. Hi, my name is Jordan and welcome to the channel. So crypto hasn't been getting the popular votes from government for many countries except for El Salvador, which made Bitcoin a legal tender. And many countries have either implemented bans or restricted use of crypto exchanges in their own countries. Like in Singapore, two of the largest exchanges have announced their exit from Singapore and have stopped providing support for Singaporean customers. Ban? Why? And in the case of the US, implementing crypto taxes in the US where US citizens might have to pay for every single transaction that they do on various crypto exchanges that they use. And most recently, Finance Minister of Singapore, Mr. Lawrence Wong, spoke in Parliament about taxing NFTs in Singapore. Mr. Speaker, the prevailing income tax rules were applied to income derived from transactions of non-fungible tokens or NFTs. The income tax treatment for NFTs will be determined based on the nature and use of the NFT. Uh, generally, a person deriving income from NFT transactions or from trading in NFTs will be subject to income tax on such income. However, a person may also derive capital gains from NFT transactions. And as Singapore does not have a capital gains tax regime, such gains will not be taxable. So this is a proposal that has yet to be passed or written on paper. And I watched the clip a few times to try and understand how this might actually affect those who own NFTs like X Infinity, Cyber Kongs, Tasty Toasties, and much more. And this was what Lawrence Wong had to say. Prevailing income tax rules will apply to income derived from transactions of non-fungible tokens or NFTs but this will depend on the nature and the use of the NFTs. And also income from NFT transactions and NFT trading will be taxable. However, because Singapore has no capital gains, capital gains from NFTs will not be taxable. So this brings up quite a few questions like what constitutes to an NFT transaction, what constitutes to NFT trading, and what are the categories of nature and usage of NFTs that will fall under this category of being taxed. But at the same time, we know that capital gain tax is not going to change anytime soon, which is a huge relief for all of us. <laughs> Although these are all still in the midst of discussion, we can look at our counterparts in the US who have crypto taxes in place for citizens who are trading cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and yield farming. So check this out. In the States, there are two types of crypto taxes, the short-term capital gains and the long-term capital gains. The short-term capital gain taxes starts at 10% all the way to 37%. And there are three main subgroups of persons who will be affected. Singles, married couples, and head of households. For singles who earn up to $9,950, there will be a 10% tax imposed for these gains. And earning more than $523,601 will come with a tax of 37%, which is insanely high because if you do the math, from the lowest to the highest tier, you could be paying anywhere between $995 all the way to almost $200,000 of taxes. And if you are a married couple, your first $19,900 is taxed at 10% rate, and anything more than $628,301 is taxed at 37%. And if this was put into numbers, this would mean a range from $1,990 to almost $240,000 in taxes. And as head of the household, I will assume that this will mean the sole breadwinners of the house. So your 10% tier tax will start at $19,900 and your 37% tier taxes will start at $523,601 or more. And this will mean anywhere between $2,000 to $200,000 in taxes. So for the long-term capital gains, the tax numbers do look smaller where there is only three tiers of taxes which starts at 0%, 15% and 20%. But across the board, anything below $40,400 is taxed at a 0% rate, and anything above $250,800 is potentially taxable at 
However, to qualify for the long-term capital gain tax bracket, one will have to hold crypto for a period of 12 months or longer, and then opt to trade or sell that crypto to qualify for the long-term capital gain tax bracket. And in hard numbers, this could mean paying anywhere between $6,000 to $89,000 in taxes. On top of that, there are multitudes of events that can trigger this capital gain tax, which includes selling your crypto, using your crypto to purchase goods or services, trading one crypto for another crypto, gifting your crypto, and much more. So even for the UK, there are also taxes for crypto. So buying or selling crypto for capital gains will trigger a tax event. And if you are paid in crypto for whatever reason, there is also tax. So mining and validating might constitute to a tax event. And if you inherit crypto or you use DeFi protocols, you might also be taxed as well. And the taxes in the UK seems to be at a much higher bracket, starting at 0% for the first £12,750 or roughly £16,600. And anything more than £150,000 or 195000 USD is taxed at a 45% rate. And if you were to calculate the numbers out, this would translate to roughly $0 in taxes all the way to $87,000 in taxes if you hit the highest tier which is at £150,000. So back to the Singapore NFT tax. At this point of time, it might still be unclear what is taxable and what is not. But here are my speculations and you should take this with a pinch of salt. And then you pinch, pinch, pin. And this is what I feel will be taxable with regards to NFT. So in the NFT ecosystem, there are three main groups involved. Mainly the creator, the user, and exchanges or marketplace. So taxes might and could be imposed on the creator and the marketplace because as Lawrence mentioned, the taxable income will come from trading NFTs and transactions of NFTs. And look at it this way. So as a creator, you create the NFT and you subsequently sell it to the users and in return for the NFT, you get paid in some crypto. Similarly, like starting a company that sells water bottles, you, they do get taxed on the profits of the water bottles that they sell. And most recently in Singapore, an influencer, Irene, who made more than $7.5 million selling pictures of herself in the NFT marketplace, OpenSea. And this could result in some taxes if the new bill is in place. And similarly, when people buy an NFT, they usually go through a marketplace like OpenSea or Mintable. And if these marketplaces are based in Singapore, this could result in taxes as well because these marketplaces do earn an income from the sale of any NFT that is listed on their site. So the last group of people that will be affected will be the users. So users could be people like me and you who owns NFT and the NFT somehow brings you some income. So like in Axie Infinity, if you do own some Axies and have scholars playing them, earning you SLP, this could be one way taxes will come into play. Or maybe you have Cyber Kongs that generates you banana tokens every day. This could be counted as a taxable income as well. Or maybe you are staking MMO on the Kronos chain and by staking your NFT, you get additional bonus yields on your DeFi farms and this might give you additional percentage in yields which might also constitute to a taxable income. But what we know so far is that capital gains on NFT will not have any tax. What this might mean is that when you purchase your NFT and sell it for a higher price in the future, the profits you get from the sale might not be taxable, which is something great. So this is how I think the NFT taxation will play out in Singapore for us. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on Monday and Thursdays, or maybe sometimes Saturdays.